afternoon. Um, like to welcome you to our afternoon. Uh, Jacinta is talking to us about um, getting your talk accepted at conferences like this one. And Jacinta doesn't need to start just here. Um, she's been doing talks for uh, ever. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so she's got a lot of information and knowledge for you. Thank you, Jacinta. Okay, just a quick show of hands. I actually expected the room to be uh, sparsely populated because if you're here, there's a good chance, unless this is your absolute first time at a conference, you, that you have actually successfully presented at a conference before. But hands up if you've never presented at a conference before. Any mini conf, main, anything. Okay. Stand, hands up if you've submitted many proposals and only occasionally been accepted and you're like, hey, how do I make my proposals better? Well, at least that would be me, seriously. Okay, getting your talk accepted. My background for this, in case you're curious, is I tend to be on a lot of papers committees. So I've, I've got it, as a, a speaker, the question is often, so how do I get accepted? I've tried a few times, it hasn't worked, how do I get accepted? It's a common question at least that I used to have. And when I started joining papers committees, I started realizing that there's actually a multitude of reasons why you may or may not be accepted. Some of them have to do with you and some of them don't. So, I've been a papers committee person in LC for LCA since 2008. I've done lots of paper selection for SAGEU and OSDC. So I have a bit of an idea about what this is like. Now, first of all, pick your conference. I want to speak at a conference is a little vague. I want to speak at LCA. I want to speak at the Hackson Miniconf. I want to speak at SAGEU. I want to speak at OSDC. Pick the conference you want to speak at. And some of them are harder to get into than others. For example, SAGEU is really easy to get into. SAGEU gets fewer than twice as many proposals as it needs um, speakers. So you have a better than 50% chance. Sometimes you have a better than 100% chance in that they don't get enough speakers. OSDC gets about the same, well, about tw twice as many talks as it needs. So you've got about a 50% chance of getting in. YAPSI, yet another Pearl Conference, anywhere in the world, there's like Europe and Asia and all that, they're pretty easy to get into as well. OS Bridge, one of my favourite conferences, it happens to be in Portland, harder to get into, but not very, very hard. OSCON, likewise, they accept a ridiculous number of talks. So whilst they're not short on talks, I wouldn't imagine, I don't actually know, not being on the papers committee, but I wouldn't imagine they get more than two or three times as many talks as they need. Every other conference I know of, fairly manageable to get into, and then there's LCA. LCA is the hardest conference I am aware of to get your talk accepted at. I'm talking open source conferences, academic conferences and such may be different. But LCA, accept, or LCA receives five times or more talks for the slots it's accept, it, it accepts. And when you are receiving five times or more talks, you're throwing away awesome talks just to have the even more awesome talks that you've selected. So it's not that you are a bad writer that you don't get accepted by LCA. You just have to keep trying. There are all sorts of speaker rewards for speaking at a conference. I'm sure you know what um, some of them are. My favorite one is free entry. Just a quick one on these three conferences I've mentioned that are in Australia. SAGEU runs uh, early August. OSDC, late November or early December. <coughs> and of course, you've, you might have noticed, we're mid to late January at the moment. So, you've picked a conference, hooray. You've gone and found its call for proposals. Or at least you've tried, because they're not always widely distributed. This is, this is a small flaw. Some conferences don't get very many red, uh, paper submissions because they don't say, hey, everybody. They're like, hey, this small little group here, give us papers. So if you, can't, if you want to pick a conference and you can't find the CFP, do 
own mailing lists, make friends, watch websites, talk to the committee. Ask, find out. But anyway, get the CFP somehow. You got the CFP, excellent. Now we're up to the fun bit. Write your abstract, and this really is the hard bit as well as the fun bit. First of all, I'm gonna th assume that you have a topic in mind, because of course that's, a hard, that's something that you have to do as well. Pick your, you know, it's a little bit about your conference audience. LCA will probably accept great talks about hacking hardware and hacking software and, and doing maker hacks, but are probably slightly less willing to accept a, a talk on how to bake a sponge cake. Even though sponge cakes are great. Whereas OSDC, at least for uh, lightning talk, seems to have things about making cheese and the best way to grind coffee. So <laughs> there's some variability. Lightning talk's a special case though. So you're writing your abstract and you have, you have to have two audiences in mind for your abstract. The first audience to have in mind is the program committee. That's me and other people who are going to be reading this abstract, this proposal, and they go, we're going to be going, do we accept this one? You obviously need to have us in mind. The second one is the attendee, because 99% of the time, you're not gonna go back and rewrite your proposal. So this is what's gonna end up on the website. This is the thing that's going to present, uh, represent your talk. And if the attendee thinks it looks boring, they're not gonna go to your talk, and you're gonna be talking to a room of empty chairs, which is rather peaceful and sort of zen-like, but not what we're looking for. So let's talk a bit about the program committee. Now the program committee does not know whether or not you are a good speaker. The program committee has no idea whether you can speak. Now these days we try to make it a bit easier for ourselves, we ask you to link to a YouTube video of you speaking. But not everyone does, in fact I'll say only like maybe a fifth of the participants do. So if you don't have a video of you speaking, we're just going to have to guess. Can this person speak well? And we cheat. The question we actually ask is, can you write well? So if your written English is a little poor, we're going to assume that your spoken English, your ability to present is poor. If your spoken English is terrible, but you are the most amazing writer under the sun, we're going to be fooled and you'll probably be accepted. Keep that in mind. So, think of it in some ways, your talk, your talk proposal, the thing that you write for us, it has to be candy. And so you do need to write well. Make sure you check your spelling. I'm, you would be surprised at how many proposals we throw away because of a sheer number of misspelled words. It's okay to make the occasional typo, everybody does it. But if you can't get the right there, there or there, or your, or your, or those kind, or your, there's another one, um, or, or those kinds of words, and you don't bother getting someone else to proofread your proposal, we're going to suspect that you're going to not bother getting someone to listen to your talk as well. A grammar as well, punctuation, please don't put your apostrophes, hey there's an S coming up. Capital letters, if you have all of your, lower, your I's lower cased, and you're not Amanda Palmer, we might not accept your talk. <laughs> and your proposal, ideally, it's to tell some, a story. Dear audience, this is what I'm going to tell you. It's slightly better than discusses A, B, and C. On the other hand, 2,000 words of florid essay, probably incredibly entertaining to read, is going to fail the skim test. Also, we're not writing for academia. So we don't want highly technical jargon, throw as many long words in there as possible, because that's distracting for us to read as well. Now here's a proposal I got once. As you can all see, this is a wall of text. It's some stuff about spam. We don't really, I, I didn't, I found this really, I don't expect you to read this, I'm not gonna read it to you. I found this really hard to read when I got this as a proposal. But I kinda thought, hey, this person probably has a good, a good talk behind them. It's just, that is a terrible proposal. So this is sort of my reaction. <laughs> and I also want to say, wall of text, really bad. Paragraphs, great. Please use paragraphs. We have short attention spans these days. If we can get it by with reading your first paragraph and ignoring the remaining 20, 
We're going to get by reading your first paragraph and annoy, ignoring the next 20. So I wrote back to this person, I said, hey, I think you've got a good talk there, but your proposal is unreadable. Perhaps we could reword it slightly. And I broke it into paragraphs which, and completely rewrote it. So there's this stuff and then there's this one. Now, you might remember back in high school, if you had a really good English teacher, your English teacher would have told you, when you write an essay, the first sentence of every paragraph, if you were just to read the first sentence of each of those paragraphs, would be enough to get a gist of what the essay was about. At least that's what my high school teacher told me, and it saved me so much time. So let's go back and have a look at what we changed these to. You probably get too much spam. How can you get less spam? We need to publish our email addresses so that we can be contracted by non-spammers. This talk discusses several methods to obfuscate email addresses. Hey, we have an idea of what this is about. We only read four sentences. Woohoo, we saved time. You really actually do want to make people, it, these kind of things easier for, for your, both your audiences, both of them, to read. So let's have another look at another example. Here was the proposal. What does it look like? If we just read this. Modern geeks have a life. Of course, I'm an argumentative duchy. Blah, 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 blah. In fact, actually, that's entirely one sentence. Mildly problematic. This actually did get accepted as well. It's not actually very helpful, by the way. Modern geeks have a life. I'm an argumentative duchy. Does not tell you what this proposal is about. Although, for some of us in the room, it tells you who wrote it. Okay, so consider, um, consider the audience, the people who are going to be sitting in the room when you actually give your talk. Why are they going to pick your talk? There's like four, six or something other many talks going on at this time. And tomorrow there will be six talks or something going on at the same time, and the next day and so on. Why your talk, other than maybe all the other rooms are full? Why your talk? You have to tell them why in your proposal. So you're up against other options, uh, so all that. So you need to have a really good title. How many people here have picked up a book, just browsing a shelf, possibly wasting some time, picked up a book because the title interested them? Yeah, it doesn't even have to be an amazing title, but a good title is going to get your attention. Titles we could have had before. Get less spam. Instead it was something like using blah 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 algorithm to obfuscate email addresses. And you're like, no. Get less spam. For IONS 1, save your life. Skip over anything that looks like this. Something for fun and profit. <coughs> this was really, really great, I don't know, a decade ago. It's less great now. We're all sick to death of the for fun and profit. Uh, one. Skip over anything that has the word sexy in it, such as making any topic here sexy. Not really a good plan. Skip those ones. Pick titles that grab your reader. Oh, you probably also want to skip what I did on my whatever holidays. So my summer holidays, my winter holidays, my autumn holidays. It was great when you were in primary school. It was also kind of trendy, I don't know, seven or something years ago. But it's not quite so cool anymore. Although it makes an okay subtitle. Get less spam, or what I did on my summer holidays. Might be okay. I actually recommend that you try to target five or fewer words for your title. Now obviously with this talk here, uh, my, my title in the program is a lot longer. That's because I was very slack and didn't actually send Robin a proper proposal for this talk. Have your convincing first paragraph because 90% of the time, that's a uh, made up statistic, that's what your audience is going to read. I actually believe this number, but I did make it up just then. Lots of people are just going to go, oh, what's that talk about? And they're going to skim something and they're going to go yes, no based on that. So make your first paragraph convincing. Also, if you really, really can, make your first sentence the most convincing one. Because you remember, it's that first sentence of each paragraph that they're going to want to go back and read if they're really, really skimming. Five minutes to no worries. So remember those essays. Keep them in mind back from high school days. If you learned anything, hopefully it was that rule. Each first sentence of your paragraph should be useful. Finally, 
say a couple of other, uh, one more main thing. Ask for help. You do not have to write your proposal on your own. It is not an exam. You are able to get as much feedback and assistance as you possibly can. You may want to ask for assistance from people in user groups such as Owoot, Oops. or Linux Chicks, or friends you've met at LCA. In fact, you are welcome to ask individuals of the Papers Committee for help. You could say, hey, I'm writing a talk for LCA, or I want to give a talk at LCA, I'm really enthusiastic, would you mind having a look at my proposal? And the person will say, of course I wouldn't mind, unless they're absolutely snowed under. Of course I wouldn't mind. And then I'll read it to you and then they'll come send it back to you with like 30 bazillion corrections. You'll do that and you'll have a great proposal. So, make waves, or at least make a difference. Submit to a conference. Now, Robin's going to, or somebody is going to run around with a microphone and give you opportunities to ask me questions. Please wait for the mic, because otherwise your question will not appear on the uh, video. Howdy. Um, having got past all that, do you have any advice on how to deal with the two hours I can't remember this morning before my mini-conf talk, because I'd never given one before. After the chemo, I was just, you know, nerves for the next two hours. How to deal with the fear? Is that what you're asking? I just the general jitters, I suppose. Um... More and more practice. Give your talk to user groups, give your talk to your best friends, give your talk to your mum, give your talk to the dog, possibly all in the reverse order of what I'm saying here. The more you practice your talk, the less terrifying it will be. Uh, other than that, no. I, I get nervous every time. I go to the toilet like five times before the talk. Uh, I just do. I'm sure you will. I don't know anyone, including, for example, Damien Conway, who I think is like one of the most amazing speakers ever. I don't know anybody who doesn't get nervous and sort of worry themselves about their talk. It just, it's just part of it. There's another question at the back. Uh, about talking in front of public, if you're not nervous, you need to be worried. <laughs> uh, now, Fair. for the gentleman and others, uh, Two really good organisations, uh, at least one should be near wherever you live. Toastmasters and Rostrum, both excellent people and they teach you how to speak, how to do public meetings, chairing meetings, everything that you could be find fun and you do impromptu speeches and all sorts of fun stuff and you learn and it's made a big difference. So Rostrum and Toastmasters, excellent. I must say, one of my reasons I haven't participated in either of those is the idea of impromptu speech terrifies me. <laughs> Somebody else? Anyone else? Yes? Uh, my question is about distribution. So, um, you know, you spend a lot of time preparing it, then you actually cope with presenting it. But of course, the work afterwards is, um, do you link it from your website, from your blog, or, you know, do you, how many uh, places do you actually feel it ought to be distributed to? All right, so this really depends on both why you're speaking and if it's essentially what you see that of the value of that. I haven't actually ever run a blog, it's not something it's not something that I've found of great value and I don't actually mind too much if beyond the conference attendees not many other people see my talk because it means that when I offer to give it to another conference further down the line they're like, oh, they're not like, oh yeah everyone's seen that one. On the other hand, yes, if you're, if, you're, if you're doing this for personal reputation and it's something that you want to really want to say, hey, look what I did, of course, link it everywhere you can. There's one place I do recommend. There's a website called Langyard, but it's missing uh, one of the A's because, of course, it's like on the internet. So L-A-N-Y-R-D.com. And Langyard allows you to collect in the sense of uh, it knows about a whole bunch of conferences and you say, I went to that conference, I gave these talks. And it will remember those for you. And that's quite handy. It not necessarily links to the talk proposal. Uh, sorry, it links to the talk proposal, doesn't necessarily link to the talk content unless the conference does, but it is supplemental, supplemental information that you can add. And it's actually 
kind of cool if you go and you work on it diligently and obsessively perhaps and you're like oh wow I've been to 30 something events and I've spoken at given 40 something talks I've got a good ratio some people are like completely in, in both directions the other way around <laughs> thank you any other talks no questions <laughs>